Hi students, um, today we're doing a quick dictation lesson thinking about the apostrophe D. We did a previous dictation practicing with apostrophe S and identifying whether the word was is or has, she's thinking, she's been thinking, was the word the apostrophe S is or has. Today we're going to be doing we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna be doing a dictation using apostrophe D. So every sentence will have apostrophe D in it. Um, and your job is to try and decide is the apostrophe D had or is the apostrophe D would. Remember that when we do dictation, um, specifically, I don't want you to see my face so that you are not using my lips, you're not using my actions to um, remind you of any of the sounds or any things like that. So let's jump in to this dictation and we'll see how it goes. Uh, we always do our dictation twice. Remember our first practice is quicker, faster, our second practice is just one time, each sentence to review, and then we'll take them apart and hear how the sentences sound. So come to number one. She'd been traveling for work. She'd been traveling for work. She'd been traveling for work. Number two, I'd like to talk with you after work. I'd like to talk with you after work. I'd like to talk with you after work. Three, they'd had a busy month. They'd had a busy month. They'd had a busy month. Four. They'd never gone there before. They'd never gone there before. They'd never gone there before. Five. She'd be there if she could. She'd be there if she could. She'd be there if she could. Six, I didn't know if she'd traveled there before. I didn't know if she'd traveled there before. I didn't know if she'd traveled there before. Seven, I'd go if you invite me. I'd go if you invite me. I'd go if you invite me. Our last one, number eight. He'd better be ready. He'd better be ready. He'd better be ready. Remember that you can rewind, you could listen again, you could pause it between the sentences if you feel like I'm going a little bit too fast. Let's come back to our sentences one more time each. One, she'd been traveling for work.
to... I'd like to talk with you after work. Three. They'd had a busy month. Four. They'd never gone there before. Five. She'd be there if she could. Six. I didn't know if she had traveled there before. Seven. I'd go if you invite me. And eight. He'd better be ready. All right, let's jump into our review of the sentences and our explanation of the pronunciation. Because with this dictation, we're focusing on the apostrophe D and whether the apostrophe D represents had or would, I won't spend as much time focusing on the different pieces of reduced English, the linked pieces, um, although we will talk about them a little bit. So let's jump into number one. She'd been traveling for work. She'd been traveling for work. Here my she'd, apostrophe D, is my word had. Had been traveling. This is my present, perfect, continuous, meaning that she began traveling. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is my past, perfect, continuous, meaning that she began traveling sometime in the past, she continued traveling, and then she stopped. The beginning of traveling and the ending of traveling both happening in the past. She'd been traveling for work. I'd like to talk with you after work. I'd like to talk with you after work. Here my I'd, apostrophe D, representing would. I would like. The most important thing when you're trying to distinguish, when you're trying to tell the difference between had and would with apostrophe D, is looking at the verb that follows it. If the verb following it is the past participle, the third verb, more, more than likely, the apostrophe D is had. If the verb following the apostrophe D is an infinitive or an unchanged verb, most likely the apostrophe D is would. A few difficulties that we'll talk about in the next few sentences. They'd had a busy month. They'd had a busy month. This is one of the sentences that I know drives my students completely bananas because I'm saying they had had a busy month. This is my past perfect tense. Remember that the first had is the auxiliary verb. The second had is the main verb as past participle. They had gone. They had taken. They had had. They'd had a busy month. The busy month began in the past. The busy month finished in the past before another event occurred. They'd never gone there before. They'd never gone there before. Apostrophe D in this sentence, my word of had. Again, my past perfect tense. I don't see a verb immediately, but I do see gone. They had gone. They'd never gone. They'd never gone. She'd be there if she could. She'd be there if she could. My verb here of be, infinitive, unchanged, so the apostrophe D has to be would. She would be there if she could.
Number six, I didn't know if she'd traveled there before. I didn't know if she'd traveled there before. Here my apostrophe D, followed by the past participle, had. Again, my past perfect tense, my past perfect tense, she had traveled. And I know that past perfect looks a little bit crazy because we see past tense with had and we see past tense with ed. But remember that had is the auxiliary verb, the helping verb, and traveled with the ed is the main verb in the past participle form, the third verb. I didn't know if she had traveled there before. I'd go if you invite me. I'd go if you invite me. Again, looking at the verb after the apostrophe D, I see infinitive, I'd go, I would go. If my sentence for number seven said, I'd gone, I'd gone, I had gone, I'd go, I would go. My last one here was tricky because he'd better be ready. He'd better be ready. And I see B. So if I follow my pattern of looking at the verb following the apostrophe D, it would make sense here for this to be would. But if I take the sentence apart, he would better be ready. Doesn't hold any sense, doesn't hold any meaning. And actually in English, we use this phrase had better as an auxiliary, as a modal to emphasize similar to must, similar to ought to, um, to give us strength to my be ready. Really strong necessary. He had better be ready. He'd better be ready. All right, that's the end of dictation for today. I hope I'll see you later. See you next time. How'd you do on this dictation? How'd you? How'd you do on this dictation? Let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know which one was the hardest for you, which one you'd like to practice a little bit more of, or let me know if they were all feeling easy for you too. It's always good to look at your success as well as your difficulties. Finally, my student told me I'm supposed to tell you. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. Have a good day. Bye.